There are some important exceptions to the octet rule that we'll talk about in this webcast. The first exception has to do with molecules that don't have enough valence electrons. A good example, an important example, is the methyl cation that's shown here. Only six valence electrons. Obviously, it's impossible for that carbon to ever get to aid. But notice it has a formal positive charge. And in fact, the carbocation is an important intermediate in organic chemistry. And so let's add that to our building block list because this exception is actually fairly common as a reactive intermediate. So here's the first row that we skipped over before. Now it's impossible to have four electron pair domains and have a formally charged carbon. So that box is out, but we can move over to the three electron pair domain case. And in this example, we have three single bonds that make up the structure of the carbocation that's shown here. It is an exception to the octet rule, and we need to always remember that. That's what makes it such a reactive intermediate. It's also possible to have two electron pair domains for a carbocation, and that's going to have a double bond domain and a single bond domain. So those are the carbocation building blocks. And if we return to look at other structures, we'll see that in addition to the carbocation, there's the methyl radical. This is also an important intermediate. There, in this case, there's an odd number of electrons, and so meeting an octet of electrons would be impossible because there's an odd number of electrons. The same thing takes place in this nitrogen oxide molecule. An odd number of electrons means that there's going to be a single uh, electron, an unpaired electron, that's going to be present somewhere in the molecule. The second exception involves atoms like beryllium and boron that lie to the center or the left of the periodic table. Here's a quick reminder of their positions. Beryllium is in the second row all the way over next to lithium. Boron is the first of the p-block elements in the second row. The last exception to the octet rule deals with elements in the third row of the periodic table and beyond, like phosphorus, for example, phosphorus in phosphoric acid, shares a total of 10 electrons, you can see that there are four electrons involved in this double bond domain, and then two electrons each in three single bond domains to make a total of 10 electrons being shared. It's important to realize that none of these second row elements, the period two elements that are such an important part of organic chemistry, are capable of this valence shell expansion. And so we should never, under any circumstances, be drawing these elements with more than an octet of electrons. Okay, so there you have the building blocks of organic chemistry, along with some very important exceptions to the octet rule. Together, these will be all of the electron configurations that we'll encounter throughout the entire year.